Hi, welcome to Woodcraft Spokane. Me, Joel and I are going to walk you through some stock preparation. It seems like it's been forever, Joel, since you and I have been uh, doing a demo. How you been? I'm great, but they can't hear me. You've got the mic. Well, Joel, we need to get you mic'd up and in front of the camera more because you bring a lot to the table here at Woodcraft. So, Joel, we have quite a task in front of us today. And that, that task is, how do we take in a 20-minute demo and do what we normally do in a six-hour class? We actually offer a class on this called Rough to Ready. So we're going to be throwing a lot of information, Joel, and we're not obviously going to get to do everything we do in the class, but we should be able to give kind of an overview on uh, stock preparation. So that being said, this stock preparation, it starts with the plans. It starts with the planning. How many times, Joel, are you and I out on the floor and someone comes up and says, man, I need a piece of wood because I'm building a box. And our answer is, well, how big a box are you building? Well, I don't know. I just, I want to build a box. Well, what material do you want to use? Well, I don't know. I don't know what material. What, what material would you use? So... This whole stock preparation starts with the planning. How much material do I need? What kind of material do I want to use? Then once that's figured out, Joel, we get over to the wood racks. And as you know, sometimes that can be confusing even for us that do this every day. We're going to talk about you know, is the material that you're looking at, is that S1, is it S2, is it S3, is it S4? What does that mean? Then we're really going to throw a wrench in there because we all know what 12 inches is. Well, we're going to put everything in board feet. And then to complicate it even more, we're going to tell you, well, that's four-quarter lumber. And you're thinking, well, four-quarters make a hole. Well, not in this case with lumber. Four quarters actually on a board that's S to S will come in at about 13 sixteenths. So it gets kind of complicated because six quarter could be one and a half, eight quarter could be two inches, five quarter could be right at an inch. So again, it depends on the material. Let's talk a little bit about the S's, Joel. S1 would be surfaced on one side. So that could be surfaced here on one side. It could be jointed. That's what it means. So surfaced on four sides would mean face, back, and both ends are done. Surfaced on two could be a face and a, a jointed edge. So it gets kind of uh, complicated on that. And then Joel grading. They grade lumber so crazy, I don't understand it. I buy thousands of dollars of lumber a year and still don't understand grading and how that works. It's, it's kind of its own um, animal. What we do know, Joe, what's our motto? It's safety first, right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to give you some different options. And like I said, there is no way in a 20-minute demo that we're going to be able to cover everything we do in a six-hour um, class. We're going to give you just some basic ideas because each board, each situation is going to be handled differently. So Joel, I picked out a piece of Purple Heart. So let's say that you had come in and you said, man, Steve, I want to build my wife a jewelry box and I want to use a piece of Purple Heart. So you go back to the wood, crack, or the wood rack, Joel, and you find this. Can you zoom on that so we can show them what a beautiful board this is? Are you catching the twist? So remember where I said that this kind of starts after planning, it starts in the lumber rack itself? This is probably a board I would um, go ahead and avoid. There is some use that can be um, gotten out of this board, but you would have a hard time getting the twist out of that board to get it flat unless you're looking for a product. Gosh, we could take this down to notebook thin, Joel, and still have a twist in it. And the reason being is our planer, it has enough what we call mechanical compression. So it's squeezing down on that board as it's going through. 
to keep pushing that thing through, keep pushing it through, keep pushing it through. And we're not doing anything to take the twist out of that. A good exercise board. Yeah, a good exercise board, Joel. So there are a couple different ways we would describe this. This would be what we call the classic twist. Now, there's what they call a cup, and a cup is exactly that. It's a board that looks like that. Then there's what we call the crook, Joel. A crook is a board that's essentially flat like this, and then all of a sudden, it looks like a skateboard or something going up. That's what we call a crook. And then there's the classic bow, Joel. The bow is a board that is in the middle, essentially flat, and it bows out on both ends like this. So those are four different things that we talk about with a warped board. Now there's a couple other things to look for, Joel. Can you, can you get a good picture of that? That's a check, okay? So I brought this piece of black walnut in from home today. This is a um, black walnut that um, I got as part of a trade out for a cabinet job I did. It's t um, 25 years old. It was a tree that was knocked down here in the valley and the gentleman stickered it and held on to it for 25 years. So we have this big check here. If I was gonna need somewhere around mm, about a 41 inch board, this is probably, and I needed it at basically that width, this probably isn't the right board, Joel. I'll never be able to do anything with that check. I would need to grab a different board. And we can also see not only do we have a check here, we also have a split here. So this is a great board, Joel, but we also have a check and a split going right there. So this is a board that we're going to go ahead and cut back to here. And now, Joel... What do I have? I would have a board that would come in somewhere around 29 um, inches, and I have a very usable board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the Capex, which is our miter saw, and I'm gonna take and cut this thing down to 29 inches, Joel. So I'm walking over there, and I don't know that you need to follow me and film, because I'm gonna be right back in front of the camera I just wanted to show these people what this board looked like with all the checks and the splits in it. Now, Joel, what I've got is I was able to cut those checks and splits out of it. So there is some planning that goes on with your wood selection. Again, if you were looking for a piece longer than this, this probably isn't the board. So, where do we start with this thing to start getting in flat and usable? We're going to start with our joiner, Joel. So, I'm going to bring our GR gripper with me that I just put together. And we're going to come right over to the jointer. All right, Joel, what I'm gonna do here is first thing is turn on my dust collection. The second thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my square, Joel, and make sure my fence is square to the bed of my jointer. And it looks good. So then, Joel, we're gonna use the jointer to flat joint one side of this. You don't always have to be edge joining on this. It'll actually do a flat joint. Typically, because safety first, we would be using tools like this, Joel, to help guide that board through. We're gonna use our GR gripper in one of these. So I'm gonna come over here Make sure my gripper's fitting. Make sure that my little piece that hangs down 
is going to be out of the way of the uh, knives, which I am. And then I'm going to use this one. So can you see how I've got this grip, Joel, and what I'm getting ready to do? Okay. I'm also going to throw on some ear protection, Joel, if you don't mind. So you'll need to signal to me if I'm talking too loud. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn my joiner on. And I'm going to start running this, Joel. And I don't know if you heard the difference in the pitch of, those, of the jointer, but there's a spot in there you can see that it didn't get. And that's because this board isn't perfectly flat. So that's the first thing that we're doing. We're going to flatten this thing. Again, we're going to come over with our gripper. Now, Joel, you can see I have a flat, planed surface here. Normally, I would shut this off um, as I'm talking to you, Joel, but we're going to continue with our process here. So now I have a flat surface that I can turn around and run against, the, uh, run against my fence on my joiner. So now I'll get a jointed edge over here. So we're going to deposit our tools right here. And again, never walk away from a running power tool because your neighbor, the person that's assisting you, they may not know that tool is running. Safety first, shut it off, move your tools around, then come back to it. Where it's just Joel and I in here, that's why I was able to walk our way. So now we're going to take our board, put it against our fence, and Joel, now we have a nice edge. I've got a little hiccup still right here. I'm going to run this board through one more time. So right now, Joel, I have S2S material, surfaced two sides. We still have rough. We still have rough. So what's the next thing that we want to do? Well, we can either take it over to the table saw and square it, or we can run it through the planer and knock off this top piece. So while we're standing next to the planer, let's use it next, Joel. We've got all this brand new equipment, Joel, that we're still trying to get where it does what it's supposed to do first time. That's the beauty of live uh, demos, Joel. Okay, so now we've got our planer ready to go. So let's come over here to our infeed side. And how do we know it's the infeed side, Joel? Because our controls are right here. So we're gonna come over and get it pretty close. Get it where it's just starting to track. There we go. It's just starting to cut and clean that side up, Joel. So that's why it's important that we flatten this side first 
so that now we have a flat side to run through our uh, planer because again this has got enough mechanical compression if I wouldn't have flattened it it would have still ran through but we would have always had that bow in there Joel And you can see it's starting to clean that up. Ear protection, eye protection, they're a must when using these tools, Joel. The other thing is I know that this stuff gets expensive. But you should not have your vacuum hooked up to your jointer or your planer. It should be a dedicated dust collector. Otherwise, you're not evacuating enough sawdust and chips. It's harder on your machines. It's harder on your blades. If it's not getting all the chips and that out of there, you're not going to get as quality of a cut. So we're going to run one more time on this, Joel. Okay, so now we've got a board that is S3S, surface three sides. So one, two, and an edge. So what's our final thing we've got to do? I still have a rough edge over here. So what can we do with that? Well, we can take and run it on the joiner or we can take it over to our saw stop over there and run it right against the fence of the saw stop. Let's use a table saw today, Joel. So we're coming over to our saw stop. We're going to do a couple things here. I'm lifting the blade guard right now so that I can get my blade height. So how do you set the height of the blade, Joel? Well, the way that I was taught on this, this, this little uh, half moon looking thing right there, that's called a gullet. That's the gullet of the blade. It's there to evacuate sawdust and chips. So I was taught that you bring it over you take your blade and you want your gullet to be just above the thickness of your wood. Okay? So then my tape measure is right here in my pocket. So I am going to take and go, well, I got two and three quarters there. Two and three quarters. So, Joel, I believe that I can get a board cleaned up somewhere around two and three sixteenths. Now, this red zero clearance plate here, Joel, when I was teaching the safety class in here, I called that the kill zone. If it's in red, that's the kill zone. Even with all the built-in safety features on this saw, I don't stick my fingers in that area of the kill zone. That's where the push stick's going to come into place. So we're going to get our blade guard back down. We're going to get that back down. Joel, my trusty assistant, he's going to turn on the uh, vacuum system for us. My saw has already gone through its pre-check. So now we're going to be able to energize it. We're going to stand to the side so that we're avoiding any kickback. We're going to feed that through. As we come into the kill zone, we are going to take and push that through. Now, you can see I left that a little fat. So, what do I need to do? I need to come back over here and let's do another pass. So, there we go. We're coming back through. There 
There we go. So Joel, we never want to walk away from our table saw while the blade's running, right? That way somebody else again coming into the shop, they don't know what I'm doing over here. A good habit to get into, when I'm making multiple cuts, at the end of my multiple cuts, I'm lowering the blade. And I want that blade underneath. Why is that? Let's say I was doing some maintenance on my saw blade maintenance. For whatever reason, I have my guard up. My good friend Joel, my good neighbor, stops by and says, Hey, Steve, what are you doing today? And he sticks his hand right there. He's not going to cut his hand on that sharp blade. It's always a good idea to lower that blade. So you can see, Joel, this, this preparation, this wood prep, there's a lot of safety involved in this too. That's why we recommend that you take the Woodcraft safety class and then we offer this class in a rough to ready uh, format that's a, about a four to six hour class. Let's go back over to the table and wrap this thing up, Joel. So now I have a piece of stock that I know is square, same thickness, ready to work. There's a couple other little tricks, Joel, that when you're using your table saw, sometimes on long, let's say that when we started this process, this board was too long to flat plane on my joiner. Well, there's a couple tricks you can do on your table saw. I have a couple pieces of poplar that are about eight feet long that I know to be true. So I can take this board right here, Joel, with a rough edge and butt it up next to that poplar and take some pinch dogs, which we sell at Woodcraft. And what you do with these is you take your hammer and you take and pound it in to here and here. And it doesn't have to go in very far. All it's got to go in is far enough to hold this. So now what have I done, Joel? I've created a piece that's square against my fence. So this piece, no matter what's going on on this edge it hasn't been worked, is going to be able to be ripped through my table saw. And um, I'll get a square edge on it. Because unless this is planed flat, you can run it through your joiner all day long and it's not going to be square because you're not going to get the waves out of it. And Joel, I know you're a wood junkie. You got to admit, this is a beautiful piece of black walnut. So, any questions? Do we have anybody watching even? Good. So if you have questions, you want more information, we're here at Woodcraft to help. Every tool that I demoed today, everything that we talked about today can be purchased at your local Woodcraft store. So do you want to give it another couple minutes in case we have questions, Joel? All right, so again, when do you come in and buy rough lumber versus the stuff that's already S4S? I'm going to leave you with this thought. That has to do with your skill set. It has to do with the tools available to you. That jewelry box that you're starting may be the most expensive jewelry box in the world if you've got to come in, buy a planer, buy a joiner, buy a table saw, versus already buying some S4S material that we have right here. In my cabinet shop, Joel, I spend a lot of time doing stock preparation for people who still want to build the project. We will do the planing, the joining, the getting things ready to go. That way people can still enjoy building something, but don't have to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars in um, tools. So again, if you don't have any questions, Joel, Hoping everybody's staying safe out there.
Thanks for joining us today. Come see Joel and I at your local Spokane Woodcraft store.